Jenny has faced things that she just couldn't do in her life and still moved on and still persevered. And that's a testament to her faith and character. And that's Mm -hmm. really what the documentary is about. Welcome to the 15th season of Heart to Heart with Anna. I am Anna Jaworski and the host of your program. Today's show is an anniversary of a heart documentary, and our guests are James Eric and Jenny Busta. James Eric is a heart patient, a director, and the producer of Journey's Beginning, a documentary about Jenny Busta and her life with hypoplastic left heart syndrome, or HLHS. James was a sound technician, producer, writer, and director in Hollywood, California, until he had a heart attack in 2008. After recovering from quad bypass surgery, he met counselors and campers from Camp Del Corazon on the set of ER and volunteered at the camp the following year. That's where he met Jenny and learned that a person could actually live with half a heart. A year later, Mr. Eric's cousin and his wife discovered they were expecting a little girl with HLHS and decided to continue the pregnancy despite advice from others to terminate. Jenny and James took a road trip to Colorado to meet his cousin and their daughter. They filmed the journey and created the documentary almost 10 years ago. Jenny Busta was born with hypoplastic left heart syndrome, or HLHS, in 1985. She had her Norwood procedure at one day of age and the Fontan procedure at 17 months of age. She received a pacemaker when she was three years old, and she has had numerous pacemaker replacements and heart catheterizations since then. Jenny, her parents Jill and Paul Sorensen, and her husband Nick Busta have all been strong advocates in the congenital heart defect community. Perhaps the biggest project for Jenny to date has been her participation in the making of the documentary, Journey's Beginning. My loyal listeners will remember Jenny from when she was on Heart to Heart with Anna in season one, way back in season one. She was on a program entitled Surviving the Teenage Years with a Congenital Heart Defect. And then in season two, I had the good fortune of having Jenny and her wonderful husband, Nick, on a program entitled Adult CHD Survivors Finding Love. And she was on that program with Lauren Bednards and her husband. So that was a fun episode. I'll have the links to those shows in the show notes for anyone who would like to listen to them. We'll start by learning a little bit more about Jenny in segment one. In segment two, we'll meet James Eric. And then in the third segment, all of us will be in the studio together. And we're going to talk about this documentary even more. So welcome back to Heart to Heart with Anna, Jenny. Thank you for having me back. I'm excited to be here. I am too. I can't believe you did that documentary almost 10 years ago. Can you believe that? I can't believe it either. Yeah, it's amazing. (laughs) Well, tell me about how you met James Eric. Well, James and I, well, I call him Boom because we met at a summer camp for children with heart disease. We were both co-counselors there and we met on a night hike where one of my co-counselors, she was not feeling very well, so she needed some medical attention. Mm -hmm. And Boom was kind of like our savior of the night because he helped get people's attention because some of the hikers were ahead. And so he got the people's attention so that we can get the help that we needed. And so that's where we initially met. And then the counselors only would have a campfire after the campers would go to bed and I just thanked him personally, and that's where we really got acquainted. So it was great. (laughs) Wow. So it was under adversity that you actually came to know each other. Yeah. And yeah, we just started talking and learned each other that we were Christians and talked a lot about our faith and just hung out the rest of the camp, really, and helped me get on the high ropes and the climbing wall. So that was pretty cool, too. (laughs) Oh, wow. Wow. I could just picture you doing that, Jenny. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Not afraid to take a challenge. That's one of the things I love (laughs) about you, Jenny. You're never afraid to take a challenge. One of the things that I love about you and your family is that all of you, your mother, your father, your husband, all of Mm -hmm. you have been such great advocates for the CHD community. But making a documentary, wow, you really lose a lot of anonymity when you do that. Would you do it again today if you had the opportunity? I would. I think so, but only if Boom was a part of it, of course. (laughs) I was very reluctant to do it before just because I had 
experiences in the past of talking publicly and people would tell me, oh, you have to say this and say that. And thanks to Boom, I got to really talk about what I wanted to talk about for the first time. And it was all me, you know, not people telling me what to say and stuff. So it was really good experience. (laughs) So why did you decide to do it? I just thought it was a great opportunity. I was very scared, but I think it was a good opportunity for me to get my story out there the way I wanted to. And Boom really listened to what I wanted, and he was very sensitive to my message and getting it out there the way I wanted to. It sounds like you had a lot of good creative input into the making of the documentary. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, it's very unique in that it's a road trip and it was just him and I talking and we just talked for hours and I opened up about a lot of things that I hadn't thought about in many years. Right. It and didn't look scripted at all. It looked like it was just natural conversation. That was, yes, that was the whole point, I think, that made it really what it was. It was like a week-long therapy session for me. It's just opening up about a lot of the hardships that came along with my journey and my story. And so it really helped me to open up for the first time, and I think in a very unique way that I never would have been able to otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. I saw in the documentary that you were able to be very introspective. I think so. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So tell me what you learned about yourself in the making of the documentary. Like I said earlier, I didn't know that I had a lot of pain that I hadn't dealt with. And so it was a really neat learning experience for me and to get a lot of the things out that I didn't know was even there. And then I think God used it to heal me in a way, because just being able to be so outspoken about it and Being able to share my story in that way was just so amazing for me to just be able to release a lot of the pain that I had suffered in the past. So I believe that God really used this opportunity to help me to heal of a lot of past struggles and just difficulties growing up with CHD, as well as just getting my story out there in a unique way. Texas Heart Institute were offering us a mechanical heart and he said, no, Dad, I've had enough. Give it to someone who's worthy. My father promised me a golden dress to twirl in. He held my hand and asked me where I wanted to go. Whatever strife or conflict that we experienced in our long career together was always healed by humor. Heart to Heart with Michael. Please join us every Thursday at noon Eastern as we talk with people from around the world who have experienced those most difficult moments. This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The opinions expressed in the podcast are not those of Hearts Unite the Globe, but of the hosts and guests, and are intended to spark discussion about issues pertaining to congenital heart disease or bereavement. You are listening to Heart to Heart with Anna. If you have a question or comment that you would like addressed on our show, please send an email to Anna Jaworski at Anna at hearttoheartwithanna.com. That's Anna at hearttoheartwithanna.com. Now, back to Heart to Heart with Anna. Welcome to Heart to Heart with Anna, James Eric. Hello. Thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. Well, I'm so excited to get to know you better. When I met you before, it was actually in Texas when we were, was it premiering? The documentary? Was that the first time it had been shown? Yes. Joshua Bauer, the producer, and I had gone out to Texas to do a screening for Xavier and his parents. It was kind of a fundraiser. That was where we met. We went to a restaurant, if I'm not mistaken. We did. We went out for some great Italian food. That's what it was. I remember that. (laughs) It's all a blur. It was just crazy fun. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, that was a long trip for you, and it was a lot of fun, but It's been a long time. I can't believe it's been almost 10 years. That's just amazing to me. I can't believe it. It's it's been a long time. And yeah, it's really something. And I think it's very cool that you're calling attention to what Jenny and I put together. Well, this is timeless. 
this story is priceless and it's timeless. So I think that putting a spotlight on it is just what needs to happen because I think there are a lot of people who still would benefit from watching this program. But what I didn't know, James, was I didn't realize that you met Jenny because you had a heart attack. Why don't we go way back to the beginning and tell me, you seem way too young to have had a heart attack already. What happened? Yes, I was 41. I was the youngest kid on the ward when I was set for my surgery. I was working on a show called Entourage at the time, and I had minor pains in my back and arm, and the next day went to work on the show, and the medic and my boom operator said, something's wrong with you. They sent me into the emergency room where they did a blood test, sent me over to the other hospital, West Hills Memorial. By the time I went from one hospital to the other, they had got the tests results back from my blood test, the enzyme test, figured out that I had had a heart attack and I didn't even know. Wow. So they said, okay, you need quad bypass surgery at 41. And I went in and I got the surgery. It was about a three month recovery. And the first show I came back to was ER and they were doing an episode that was about Camp Del Corazon. I was up on a ladder on the boom pole, looking down at all these little kids that were going to be on camera, and they all had little scars on their chests. And I had mine too now because I was recovering. And I went over to the makeup people and said, those look really good because I have one of those. Oh, my gosh. And, and they said, we didn't do those. And I went, okay, this is weird. What's going on? <laughs> and I went over and I talked to a couple of the counselors. And they said, yeah, this is a real camp for kids with heart conditions. And we did a scene after that with a bunch of kids sitting around talking about their scars Mm -hmm. and I was booming the shot and I was breaking down and my audio utility guy came over, grabbed me and said, dude, go outside. You can't do this. (laughs) So I ended up being a counselor at camp the following summer and that's where I met Jenny. And uh, she said, you know, after we talked for quite some time, I said, well, what's your heart condition? Like we all do. And she said, I have half a heart. I said, okay, that's funny. That's very poetic. What do you really have? She says, no, I really have half a heart. And I went, that's not possible. You can't live with half a heart. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so I said, quit joking. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and she said, no, look it up. So I Google HLHS and it's like, okay, this is something I've never heard of before. How come right. I've never heard about this? Yes. Hey, don't feel bad. I had never heard of it either until my son was diagnosed with the same defect. There you go. And so, it's, yeah. nobody ever hears of this stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, it was such an amazing idea. And Jenny and I sort of conversed over it and she set me straight as to what reality was and fast friends ever since. I love that story. That's just such a sweet story. Why did you decide to make a documentary? Well, it was actually the wife's idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, school, I came out of the heart surgery feeling like, you know, it was, what do I do now with my life? I didn't even know if I could go back to what I used to do. You know, am I going to have the energy to be on set and produce and direct? And so I got to do something. I started doing some other kinds of things versus the projects I had done. Mm-hmm. And she was like, why don't you do something on Jenny? And mm. Coincidentally, I then found out that my cousin Tony and his wife, Tawny, had just had a little girl with HLHS. I was kind of being bombarded in my heart and mind about all these coincidences that were going on around me. And I've, mm-hmm. I'd like to feel that God's hand was working. In oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Really I like. believe that. Yeah. I talked to Jenny and, I, and Nick, and I said, okay. <laughs> let me take Jenny across the country. What do you say? (laughs) And Nick was like, "Uh, okay. And Jenny was like, what are you talking about? And I said, here's my idea. And I pitched the idea. Mm -hmm. It was something that I think Jenny felt strongly about because I think for someone who's been through something that Jenny has gone through, I think you're not often given the opportunity for a real cathartic expression of Mm -hmm. your experience. And for someone to be able to just kind of go out. I said, look, we're just going to go and we're going to talk in the car. I'm going to mount the camera in the car and I'm just going to have a little button next to me and I'm going to hit record while we're driving and have a microphone on you and I'm just going to record us talking. And you can just tell me everything. It'll be the two of us in the car. And there's something about that environment and I think the isolation combined with the beautiful world we were driving through and the great nation. Oh, yeah. 
just to see our country and at the same mm-hmm. time go from that outside the window to what was going on conversation wise inside the car was a unique combination of elements that I think helped Jenny open up to what she was perhaps not given the opportunity to really speak about in other times. And I think a lot came out in that experience and it was a treasure to be yeah. there and to witness it. I loved it. I loved the documentary. It Thank you. really did give us a view of what it must be like to live and grow up with a heart defect, a serious heart defect. I mean, she's had two yes. major open heart surgeries, even though she may not remember those original surgeries. We know that she's had a lot to deal with since then. And we'll be talking about that a little bit more in the next segment. But before we go to a break, I just have to know, it took hours and hours and hours to put that documentary together. What was the (laughs) most difficult part about creating it? Certain things we filmed. I think the most challenging part for me was when we were hitting the high points of Colorado and the air is thin. Mm -hmm. And I was really concerned suddenly for yeah. Jenny's well-being mm-hmm. and we didn't have oxygen with us oh. which, yeah and so I was in a place where I suddenly realized that this is something that we're doing that's going to be appreciated by others but suddenly this was I, I've, I've taken responsibility for something that's serious here and when we crested the high point of Colorado and started down the hill. It was a great relief to me. That was the hardest part of creating this was the thought that in doing this documentary and filming it, I actually put Jenny in a position where she was at potential risk. And speaking volumes to Jenny's character, she forged through that and said, no, let's go. I'm doing this. Hi, my name is Jamie Alcroft, and I just published my new book, The Tin Man Diaries. It's an amazing story of my sudden change of heart as I went through a heart and liver transplant. I can think of no better way to read the Tin Man Diaries than to cuddle up in your favorite Hearts Unite the Globe sweatshirt and your favorite hot beverage, of course, in your Hearts Unite the Globe mug, both of which are available at the Hug Podcast Network online store. Or visit heartsunitetheglobe.org. Night Forever by the Baby Blue Sound Collective. I think what I love so much about this CD is that some of the songs were inspired by the patients. Many listeners will understand many of the different songs and what they've been inspired by. Our new album will be available on iTunes, Amazon.com, Spotify. I love the fact that the proceeds from this CD are actually going to help those with congenital heart defects. Enjoy the music. Home Tonight Forever. Heart to Heart with Anna is a presentation of Hearts Unite the Globe and is part of the Hug Podcast Network. Hearts Unite the Globe is a nonprofit organization devoted to providing resources to the congenital heart defect community to uplift, empower, and enrich the lives of our community members. If you would like access to free resources pertaining to the CHD community, please visit our website at www.congenitalheartdefects.com for information about CHD, the hospitals that treat children with CHD, summer camps for CHD survivors, and much, much more. In this segment, we are going to all be together in this studio, which is really awesome. And James, I'd like you to start by sharing your favorite memory from 10 years ago when you started filming Journey's Beginning. This might be tough for me to get through. I thought a lot about what I would say. Predicting the moments that the documentary was going to cover and things I wanted to film, like setting up cameras at Kaylin's house and then going back and getting Jenny and saying, okay, everything's set up. I'll run in and hit record and trying to predict those moments was one thing. But as we were leaving the house, there was a moment where Tawny, Tony's wife came in and said, Jimmy, you want to come get this? And I went in and Jenny was saying goodbye to Kaylin. Mm -hmm. And it was just, Mm -hmm. it was... I still can't watch it because that was, it's my favorite moment, but it's one I can't watch. (laughs) um, It was, it was from a production standpoint, the lighting is terrible. The audio is hideous and you can barely hear what's going on. But this, it's just this moment that 
as a director, if I ever caught another moment like that on camera, it would be a gift from God because that was, I would have missed it had not been for Tawny who said, Jim, come film this, you know. Mm. Wow. It was the last night of when we were there. Yeah. Jenny, what was your favorite? I'd probably have to say in the part where, boom, we were talking about being in the high elevation and it's scaring you. That was probably my favorite part because not because it was you were scared, but like I had never been up high in those mountains like that. Twelve thousand feet was the elevation we were at, and I think the most was at eight thousand feet that I'd ever been in. And so you gave me that opportunity to like, hey, I can be here in mountains. Like this is really cool. So that's probably my favorite part actually. <laughs> that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think she just liked scaring the heck out of me. <laughs> no. Oh, we should we should talk play. about cold <laughs> What? Well what? there was a term we came up with. So cold was a keyword that we used that anytime that he was freaking out, I would say cold because that means don't freak out. I'm okay. So <laughs> I would have to say that the coleslaw, it was just so random, but I think it was a word that Nick came up with and that was the word we used. So there were a lot of coleslaws being said. <laughs> yes, we'd be in so, the car yeah. and I'd say, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? And after the 10th <laughs> time, Jenny would say, coleslaw. And I'd say, oh, yep. you're hungry. You're hungry. You're hungry. You're hungry. So, so was there a code yep. word for I'm not doing well? Nope. <laughs> I couldn't just tell him that. I don't think Sorry. there was ever a moment where Jenny wasn't doing well. She was, I don't remember a moment. And maybe I'm just not remembering where Jenny looked over and said, boom, I'm not good. Something's wrong. So her lips never looked blue. She never looked like she was in distress to you. I tried to remember and I, I kept looking at her and she seemed fine to me, but it was so frightening because I'm, of course, not a medical profession and didn't sure. look, know exactly what signs to look for. And we'd spoken to doctors and nurses before we left, but you never know. I was in my environment as a producer director, but of course, completely unprepared for anything medical. And I became aware of that. And that's why those moments in Colorado at the peaks were so frightening. Yeah. Yeah. To me, obviously not to Jenny. She was right. digging the whole thing. <laughs> She's apparently that was her favorite part. She likes scaring you, boom. <laughs> exactly. I I so. Don't think I don't appreciate it. I have a heart condition too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Jenny, how did making yes. this documentary affect your life? I mean, you traveled across the country with this man who you knew, but I mean you didn't know it as well as you did when you were done, that's for sure. How did it affect you? It was just really healing for me. For instance, I talked about this one really bad bullying incident with Boom. And for 25 years, I had this reoccurring nightmare of the same bullying incident. And I realized after the film got out there and my story got heard for the first time, the nightmare stopped. I have... Wow a lot to be thankful for. Yeah. So it was just like this big release. And also what a gift it is to have the interviews that he did with my mom, my dad, my grandma, my grandma passed away over a year ago. And what a gift it is to have all of the footage yeah. of her interview, just to hear her voice and to have that comfort knowing I have that. And it's because of boom. So wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, James, you have to tell us where people can find this documentary. Of course, I'll have a link in the show notes, but can you announce for people who aren't reading the show notes how they can find the documentary? There is a Journey's Beginning Facebook page, and the link to view the video will be there. Plus, you can also message me, and I will send you a DVD if you'd like, particularly if you're a heart mom or heart dad and someone who's going through a unpredictable and frightening moments of learning your child has a heart issue. That was one of the chief reasons for doing this, along with the reason we did it with Jenny is to give to parents. And I got a lot of emails from parents that I sent DVDs to back when we did more DVDs. The heart moms would watch. It would give them a lot of encouragement. Absolutely. And How much does it cost? It's free. If you're a heart parent and you want a copy, we'll just send you one. This is about the families of children with heart disease and not about money. Did you get a grant to do this? Because this kind of thing can be expensive. No, I basically 
paid for this myself. Well, you're a philanthropist. In the truest sense of the word, you're a lover of people. And to have this kind of expression of love for people who are going through quite potentially the most difficult time of their lives is a tremendous blessing. It's difficult, I think, for heart parents because the ones that I ended up meeting corresponding and sending out DVDs because the doctors and nurses, it's their job to give parents the worst case scenario. And they Mm -hmm. aren't often put in a position where they can share the optimism and faith and hope that Jenny expresses just with her story. Mm -hmm. And so this kind of covered the other end of that spectrum, I think, that may have been missing for a lot of heart Uh, parents in their acceptance of this. And that was what this was really all about for me. To be honest, at the onset of this, I thought it would just be an interesting documentary. But as it unfolded, and as we drove across America, it became obvious to me that this was something a little more extraordinary that I had intended to do. Well, how do you feel it's held up? Do you feel that the film is still relevant? Particularly in our time right now, we're having a little bit of an unpredictability and uncertainty. And for people, I think it helps to see someone who has to deal with that adversity, not just over the last few weeks, but through her entire life. Mm-hmm. You know, Having heart disease, it's a very high mortality rate. And a lot of people seeing someone go through this like Jenny has may realize that courage in the face of this kind of threat and adversity is, is something that's should be just as contagious as whatever we're facing now. Right. For those listeners who may be listening to this podcast far in the future, it is currently April 2020, and we are in a pandemic known as the coronavirus. We are under lockdown, many of us in our homes. Many people are not working, or if they are, they're lucky enough to work from home. It's a very scary, uncertain time, and I think you're right. I think this kind of documentary gives us hope and helps us to see Really, what we're dealing with in the lockdown is not much compared to what Jenny's had to deal with her whole life, right? She's been locked down. <laughs> I think Jenny's lived in lockdown. You know, she's had to be careful of so many things where the rest of us are wearing masks and gloves. Mm-hmm. You know, Jenny has faced things that she just couldn't do in her life and still moved on and still persevered. And that's a testament to her faith and character. And that's really what the documentary is about. Yeah, yeah. And which is, for me, the reason why it's still as relevant today as the first time I saw it. It's just a beautiful story. You captured Jenny's spirit beautifully in your documentary. You did an excellent job. Well, thank you. As long as Jenny's happy with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we have heard multiple times how happy Jenny is with it. And well, James, what do you have planned for the future? Is there another documentary in the future for you? Well, Jenny and I have teased the notion of going back and meeting Kaylin, who, by the way, is still thriving despite being told that the chances of her doing so was not good. And she and Jenny are both still thriving. And oh, Wow, that's so awesome. So, Jenny, have you kept in touch yeah. with her over the years? On and off. I see them on social media, but I haven't personally talked to them in quite a while, unfortunately. But Caitlin will be 10 this September, I think. Oh, my goodness. That would be such an amazing documentary. I would love to do something like that. (laughs) We've definitely spoken about it, but I think it's something that maybe it'll be 10 years after or something like that. But since we're approaching that moment, maybe we'll do it. I've also written a script loosely on Jenny's life. I've tried to get that pushed along with some others. So there's a couple of things. Jenny obviously made a big impression on me. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. Well, thank you for coming on the program today, James. I really enjoyed hearing more behind the scenes information about this documentary. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on. I hope you're going to do another documentary and I can have you come on for that as well. <laughs> that would we have be to talk awesome. to Jenny. <laughs> Absolutely. Jenny, sweetheart, thank you so much for coming back on the program. It was great catching up with you. You're very welcome. And I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Oh, you are so welcome, sweetheart. It was so much fun. And that does conclude this episode of Heart to Heart with Anna. Thanks for listening today, my friends. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, please consider becoming a patron. Just go to www.patreon.com slash heart to heart and pledge a monthly amount to support our program. It only takes a few minutes to make a big difference. For the cost of a pizza, you can help us continue to provide great programming for the CHD community 
for a whole year. And you can be part of some special patron-only programs that we'll be recording. In April, we'll be recording a special patron-only program memorializing David Franco, who was one of my producers. So if you have a story you'd like to share, please become a patron and join us. Have a great day, my friends. And remember, you are not alone. Thank you again for joining us this week. We hope you have been inspired and empowered to become an advocate for the congenital heart defect community. Heart to Heart with Anna, with your host, Anna Jaworski, can be heard every Tuesday at 12 noon Eastern Time.